One particular important reaction in carbohydrate chemistry is the Kalani Fischer synthesis of sugars. Basically, this is a reaction in which we increase the length of our carbon chain in that sugar. We basically increase the length by adding one more carbon atom to our carbon chain inside any given sugar molecule. Now, there are two types of Kalani Fischer synthesis reactions. We have the old version and the newer version and in this lecture we're going to focus on the newer version. Now to actually examine what the reaction is and how it works let's take a look at a specific type of sugar molecule let's say an aldopentose our D-ribose. An aldopentose simply means we have five carbon atoms we have an aldehyde group on one end and a primary alcohol group on the other end of our sugar chain. Notice we have have to use the acyclic version because the acyclic version contains our free aldehyde group as shown in this diagram. Now because we begin with five sugars, because we begin with an aldopentose, we know once the reaction takes place we have to increase the carbon chain by one carbon so we go from an aldopentose to an aldohexose. So the product sugar should be an aldohexose. So let's begin with step one of our reaction mechanism. We basically take our acyclic D-ribose and we mix it with a protonated cyanide molecule. So we have a bond between H and C and a triple bond between C and N and this N carries our two electrons. So in step one this acts as an acid protonating the oxygen placing our H atom onto our oxygen and placing a positive charge on this oxygen. Now we have resin stabilization taking place so actually that positive charge is delocalized among two atoms. We have the positive charge on the electronegative oxygen and the positive charge on this electropositive carbon. Now in step two the conjugate base of this molecule that is formed in step one, the cyanide, now can nucleophilically attack uh, this carbon. It can add onto the carbon from two sides. It can attack it from the top side or it can attack it from the bottom side. And so basically we can form a mixture of two different stereoisomers. And this means because we have a mixture of these two stereoisomers, each one one of these stereoisomers will lead to its own individual aldohexose molecule. So that means beginning with one D-ribose molecule with one aldopentose, we're going to produce two sugar products, two aldohexoses. So cyanide in step two can attack the carbon either from the top or the bottom. Therefore, there will be two intermediates formed, which will lead to two different sugar products. Now in step two, we basically want to add our diatomic H molecule in the presence of palladium, where palladium is acting as the catalyst. So we have the palladium metal, which basically interacts via van der Waal forces with this carbon nitrogen bond. So we have the weakening of one of our pi bonds between the nitrogen and our carbon, and the weakening between this sigma bond between these two H's at the same time that the pi and sigma bond weakens, these two sigma bonds begin to break. And so what that means, we can add two H atoms, one onto our nitrogen and one to, uh, onto our carbon. So because we have these two intermediates that can react with the palladium in the following fashion, we produce these two intermediates. So if this reacts with the palladium and the diatomic H2, we basically form this molecule here. If this reacts, we form this molecule here. Now, in the next several steps, we're only going to focus on this intermediate here, but notice that this one can also react, and in fact, it will react to form the other sugar molecules. So let's only focus on this. 
So in step number five, we basically add hydronium in water. So basically we add our acid hydronium, which acts to protonate this nitrogen atom to form a resonance stabilized intermediate where we have our delocalization of positive charge among this nitrogen and among this carbon. Now notice this carbon is given in purple and that's because initially this carbon was not found on our D-ribose. This carbon was added onto our molecule and so this is the sixth carbon that, uh, that basically elongates our chain. So in step number six, the water molecule produced in step number five when hydronium protonates this nitrogen now attacks this carbon nucleophilically producing this intermediate. And because on this intermediate we have our positive charge on this electronegative oxygen, in the next step we basically have a shift taking place. So either some type of base deprotonates this, nit uh, this uh, hydrogen or this nitrogen that has the lone pair of electrons that is found in close proximity basically takes away the H and le uh, leaves our two electrons on our oxygen and so we form the following intermediate in which which we have this good leaving group. So in step number, let's call this step number, so this should be eight and this should be step nine. So in step number eight, we basically have our good leaving group detaches because these two electrons form a pi bond between this oxygen and this carbon. And so we have the ammonia that detaches, we have this double bond that is formed and in the final step, either ammonia or water basically deprotonates this H atom forming one of these molecules. In this case, we form... Um, so this is slightly off. So we basically have, we should have an H atom here and an OH group here. So in the, in the final step, in step number nine, we basically form one of these products. So uh, let's look at the symmetry. The OH should be found on this side. So we form the d altrose. But if this intermediate underwent these same steps, we would have formed our d allose And in fact, because we have these two I intermediates present, and they will both undergo this reaction to produce these two new sugars. Notice that d altrose and d allose are both part of a category, category known as our aldohexosis. So that means the products have one more carbon atom compared to our reactant. So the D-ribose has only five carbon atoms. It's an aldopentose and these are aldohexoses. They have six carbon atoms. And this reaction is known as the kilani fischer synthesis of sugars. It's the method by which we lengthen our sugar molecules molecules by adding one more carbon atom to that carbon chain of that initial sugar.